Last month, the Russian punk band and art collective Pussy Riot was brought to Albuquerque as part of their revolution tour. Now, while here, performance artist Maria Masha Aliokina came to our studio to talk about her experiences and the importance of crossing borders. Only together we can change everything. That's why we are doing a revolution to, um, to show that we are together. Doesn't matter that uh, these borders exist. Borders are not exist. Uh, uh, well, our goals are more important than any borders, and uh, a community which uh, we have is more important than Putin's government or Trump's government or any government. That's uh, that's what I believe. I believe at community. You can connect to the full Coloris interview through our New Mexico and Focus website. Now, many local groups believe in the importance of bringing global visitors to New Mexico, but while obtaining required travel visas has never been easy, there are increasing fears that it will only get harder. Correspondent Gwyneth Dolan looks at how this is impacting groups in New Mexico that regularly welcome business leaders, artists, and experts from around the world. She sits down with representatives of organizations that bring international visitors to Albuquerque to discuss why it's important for communities in New Mexico to have cultural exchanges with other countries. Today I am joined by Julie Hendren, a founding member and artistic director of Trick Lock Company and the curator of the Revolutions International Theater Festival. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. Adele Lees is the executive director of Global Ties ABQ, formerly known as the Albuquerque Council for International Visitors. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And Neil Copperman is the founder and executive director of AMP Concerts and co-founder of Global Kirky, an annual celebration of world music and culture. Thank you for being here, Neil. Thanks, Gwyneth. Are you AMP or AMP? You know, I actually go both ways. I like it. <laughs> That's good. So one of the performance artists from Pussy Riot told New Mexico PBS that one of their members was recently denied a visa. What happened? Well, um, we don't actually process the visas for uh, or put in the applications for the visas for most of the artists that we book. So we're not like directly in the middle of that. Um, I've asked a few questions. And from what I could see, it looks like it was maybe just... Um, some administrative kind of issues, less so than some sort of larger nefarious scheme or something. You know, um, most of the performers were coming in on uh, O2, O3 visas, which are um, for artists of exceptional interest. Um, and one member of their party was coming through on a B1, B2, a different kind of visa, which is cheaper to get. And they were coming, and that's for like um, business people who are not necessarily working. Mm -hmm. um, so it's possible that, I mean, I'm just kind of ex extrapolating at this point from what I learned, but you know, it's possible that they were just trying to save a little bit of money and they said, well, this guy's not really working on the production, and that the people who process all the visas thought it looked funny that, yeah. you know, a whole bunch of people are working on the show and then. One guy who seems to have kind of the same job as the rest of the people, he's not really working on the show. How many, how many artists do you bring in for Global Kirky? We have um, 17 performer, performance groups at the festival uh, of varying yeah, sizes. Yeah, could be so, one or ten. Yeah, mm, so yeah. probably on the order of like 80, 80 or 90 performers. So, I mean, you know, anyone who has traveled to somewhere even a little bit out of the ordinary knows that the visa process is a hassle one way or the other. Oh, but yeah. that sounds like a real hassle dealing with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a crazy hassle. And for a lot of groups, even um, lots of times for some of the big African groups when people uh, put in their visas, um, they'll put in visas for 15 people um, with the hope of bringing a nine-person mm -hmm. band um, to the United States. So they're kind of expecting some number of people not to get approved. And since, you know, maybe the drummer or keyboard player is replaceable by another drummer or keyboard player, they'll, um, they'll put in some extra musicians to try to make sure that they have a full band. Mm -hmm. we, we just did that with the group from Uganda, where we did for eight, um, and, but one was 16, and so we thought she would be denied. And she wasn't, which was great, but it, he added an extra person so that if she was, there was still enough of a dance company to come. So, Julie, you bring theater groups mm -hmm. from all over the world. Do they come in on the same kind of artist visas? Yeah, although we often do P3 visas, but it's the same kind of idea, that it's an, an extraordinary cultural act. 
um, that is that, and that's why they should be allowed to come. Um, so yeah, we do the same kind. I mean, thinking about Pussy Riot and, and artists and performers in general, many of them are kind of controversial by nature. Do, do, is that sometimes a problem for you guys? Yeah, I mean, because like I personally don't bring in big names. We're doing experimental theater, political theater, performance artists, you know, circus, things like that. And that's the whole point is these young voices, these interesting voices from around the world telling their stories, particularly cultural acts. And um, and so so they don't necessarily have this like breadth of history behind them and um, and they haven't come before. Often it's their first time traveling to the U.S. and uh, there's not, like there's just not an understanding of this kind of artist visa. It's like either you're the Lion King or you're, you know, or, or, or you're coming as a business person, you're a doctor. Yeah. So there's nothing in between. There's no understanding of that. Which there's is really actually unique and different problems with those kinds of, those kinds of visas because um, for uh, those are artists of um, cultural, uh, Cultural relevance, mm -hmm. usually for the P3 visas, right. is kind of what they're talking about. Is uh, they're culturally significant artists to be bringing, um, but lots of times, those artists, the challenge for getting them in is that for a lot of younger artists or uh, developing artists or um, artists from small villages or something, they don't have the paper trail mm -hmm. history that the U.S. government is looking for to deem them. A reasonable person to bring into the United States. So they might think of them as a flight risk. They might think that um, they don't have a, enough, they can't see enough reason for them to go back to their village mm -hmm. in Africa or South America somewhere. Mm -hmm. And yet a trip to the United States might be the thing that makes their career and gives them that paper totally. trail. Yeah, it's and, life changing. And for stuff. a lot of these things too, the cultural um, sharing elements are just huge. Mm -hmm. And those, those are the kind of things that, that Julie is is really working on, and those are the issues I've encountered working on like the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market, yeah. where we're trying to bring people, you know, like from a village in Ecuador, and they're like, well, those people have no reason to go back to Ecuador. They don't have a house, and they don't have a lot of money in the bank. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, right, and that's the only reason they have to uh, go home. <laughs> you know? So Adele, the, the folks that you bring in, you bring in like 150 people a year from around the world to meet mm -hmm. here and share, and they're doing a really specific kind of sharing. They're yeah. journalists meeting with journalists, mm -hmm. healthcare professionals, they are government officials, business leaders, mm -hmm. folks yeah. like that. And they are actually all people that have been hand selected by U.S. embassies around the world to come on this program. The program is called the International Visitor Leadership Program. Um, it has, it's a um, prestigious professional and cultural exchange program through the State Department. Um, it has, it's a 77 year old program um, and it has an impressive alumni of over 300 former and current heads of state, chiefs of government, and Nobel Peace Prize winners. So it's, um, it's a really, it's a program that has, that um, encourages long-term uh, national security, international relations um, for the U.S. and other countries. Um, so we bring, last year we brought in 267 visitors and they've all, most of them were on this program and they were selected by the embassies to come and meet with their counterparts, kind of get an idea of American life as well. We have them go to people's homes um, for dinner just to, you know, see what it's like inside of a house. <laughs> um, but then it, the most important thing is that networking in between, um, in between like the different sectors that we bring in. Um, and it's, um, it, I mean, we're hoping that this program can be, you know, can continue um, within the, you know, for many more years. Um, in the requested budget, it was cut out. So we're, you know, fingers crossed that it has a lot of bipartisan support. So in Congress. President Trump's budget, mm -hmm. yeah, cut your program entirely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, he just ca kind of mentioned that Fulbright should remain there. But <laughs> um, I mean, this program doesn't. It has the alumni that no other uh, education and cultural exchange program has. So, so you don't have visa problems because the embassies choose these people and they choose people they know they can bring, right? Yeah, so right now, I mean, the initial travel ban did cause some problems. I mean, it caused problems for even green card holders. So right. Um, right. we did have some people that were not able to come um, at that moment. Uh, we actually don't really have visitors from Yemen, Syria, or Libya right now because 
the U.S. embassies are not operating there. Um, but we, yeah, we see visitors from Iraq, Sudan, um, Somalia as well. So um, not Iran yet, but, <laughs> but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, maybe in the future. Um, so yeah, we don't have, and we don't. I mean, the State Department is processing all of their visas, and they come on a J-1 visa, which has actually been. Um, you know, it's not counted towards the travel ban uh, with the current six countries that are have that on them right now. Have uh, any of you, have you had a chance to be impacted? Uh, not like you want to. Have you been impacted <laughs> by the travel ban yet at all? I mean, we weren't for this particular festival. We were really, I mean, we held our breath a lot. It was pretty nerve wracking, but everyone d was able to come in. We did have an artist that was here two years ago from Iran who wrote, uh, just because we're all friends, kind of wrote to his, his group and he, he, he was, he lives in New York most of the time. He went back to Iran to see his family and he was, he couldn't come back. So, um, and um, so he's still there. Um, but you know, every year we have we often have people who are denied, and it's and it's typically what Neil is saying. It'll be like a young dancer who's with a new company, mm. and they'll like it'll get approved on this end. But then when they go to the embassy in their country, to the U.S. embassy, to have their interview, and then it's like exactly, do you don't own a home, you know, you don't have such and such amount of money in your bank, so clearly your life can't be worth anything. You must not be going to come. You not you must not you know you're not going to come back. Um, and then they're denied and then you have to scramble and figure okay, so we can't bring this show So instead but these two were allowed to come in so we'll do a different show and and that sort of thing that that happens often um, Because the structure actually what's in place is is faulty and now with this with the travel ban You're just compounding all this fear on top mm -hmm. of it yeah. and that's the biggest thing So now you have people who work in airports people at border control passport control mm -hmm. um, You know just US citizens unfortunately who think something that is incorrect all based on fear and so now the, the chance to actually move forward in a different way around cultural exchange and particularly with artists and other people who are doing these great things mm -hmm. in the world it's just going to get worse and worse and worse because now everybody's afraid yeah, but the point of the cultural exchange <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> is to combat that exactly, exactly. exactly. Right. exactly. yeah wouldn't yeah. that be nice the, the fear factor is i mean obviously the fear factor is probably something we're just going to keep seeing since it mm. was a big part of the whole campaign yeah, yeah. um but the fear factor is the biggest impact I, I've seen thus far. Uh, we haven't had direct impact, but we're seeing, there's just a lot of nervousness. There's a sense that, mm -hmm. well, it was hard to get visas before. It was hard to make this stuff work. It's gotta get harder. And so there are a lot of people that are just kind of pulling back a little bit. You know, we had, um, I mentioned the folk art market before because I helped program the entertainment for the National Folk Art Market in Santa Fe. and. Um, we had groups that are government-sponsored groups from their own countries that were thinking of uh, bringing artists who just decided not to because they figured this is just not the year to try to bring an extra contingent to have musicians and dancers. We'll just focus on the craft artists. So I'm seeing that kind of hesitancy. Mm -hmm. So whether it's actually we don't have enough money to do it because mm -hmm. they've cut the budget or people are afraid or they're intimidated or they are caught up in a ban what is the impact on Albuquerque on Santa Fe on New Mexico if we don't have these artists and musicians and uh, doctors mm -hmm. and yeah. diplomats and business people what's the impact on us if they don't come well, one of the things I, I often talk about is, you know, our, our state is very, doesn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We rank quite low. And so most people aren't able to travel. They can't afford it. And so things like Global Kirky and, and, and Revolutions and other international mm -hmm. programs is a way for people to experience things from around the world where they can't actually go out. And I hear that a lot from our audiences. Thank you for letting me, you know, not letting me, but thank you for bringing this. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see it. And, you know, one of the things with us with funding is we keep our ticket prices really low or we have things that are, are free so that that also doesn't impact people um, economically. And, and, you know, when you're ripping, when you're like, well, you know, no more international stuff and you're pulling it all away, <clears throat> then that, that's, that's stopping people from being able to see it. So that's the big thing for me. Neil? It's, it's pretty much the same. It's all about cultural exchange. It's all about learning and getting new experiences. And um, while I tend to feel like our work isn't inherently political, there's, there's an undercurrent of political element to it in that, you know, bringing artists from all over the world 
is a way to sh that people understand that people around the world are interesting and different and not scary yeah. and there's similarities and mm -hmm. there's differences. The differences are actually really cool. Look at how those guys sing or, you know, the instruments that they brought that are really fascinating. You know, so it, it kind of helps combat that fear of the other, you know, and, and we want that all the time. And it's energizing, you know, it, you also take fresh ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. Adele, on in on your program's mm -hmm. part, there's a very strategic United mm -hmm. States exactly. interest behind yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, we um, there's all of the I mean, there's economic, diplomatic relationships that are formed through this program. Um, the cultural component is also very important. It's a very long term strategy for um, positive international relations between the U.S. and other countries. But I mean, the economic impact is also. Um, you know, you can obvious with our programs as well because if you know visitors can't come, you know, there that impacts like hotel um, nights, what they spend in our communities. I mean, they they bought they shop like crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh my God. Yep. Yeah. Like hundreds of dollars um, in you know in every kind of store. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, Old Town just might have to shut down. Exactly. We can't bring our visitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Uptown. It's a, it's a, yeah, Uptown. I mean, I yeah. think the places that we go the most, and probably your guys yeah. too, uh -huh. are Apple like Store. Best Buy, yes. the Apple Store, yeah. and Ross Dress for Less. Yeah. So it's cultural and economic. economic. Oh, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Thank you all so much for being with us today to talk about this. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks you. very much.